Hi, babies. It's time to taste and see that the Lord is good. And just noticing there's so many instances where we have subjective experiences with the Lord providing for us. And uh, it's kind of um, brought out in the scripture that he inquires frequently, what do you see? He asked Abraham to come forth abroad and he went out and uh, just unfolded the whole starry array to him. What, what do you see? How much do you see? And there's just a mindset of abundances that God intended to, to heap upon Moses. I mean, not Moses, but Abraham. He asked Jeremiah, what do you see? Um, in the uh, the olive branch was was budding. He was he was seeing an olive branch, and uh, there's a promise of life in that new beginnings. He asked uh, the guy that was healed of blindness, Jesus, um, healed this man's eyes, and asked, "What do you see?" Well, I see trees walking around. It's like, well, look again. <laughs> you know, there's like a progressive layering of abundances and, and realms and dimensions that when we can tap into that through vision, we are laying hold of, of sustenance and provision. So I was... Um, recently just like mulling over like, what, what I'm going to eat tonight what, what's going to be for supper what do I have to pick up at the market and and so it, at our vernacular this is the way that we are trained in our day-to-day -day lives is that I, I need to make a statement where we are consenting to an entanglement with a, a false matrix economy <laughs> that I need something and so this this world that we're in and, and you know the distributed di distribution lines and the corporations and the shelves and the cashiers the, everything that we have conditioned our minds to think that our provision is coming through is challenged when the Lord comes along and wants to change our vernacular that I need this and therefore these are the channels that I must go through I receive what what do you see he, he came upon um, the man that was blind he came upon Jeremiah he came upon Abraham what do you see and the reality is that when your eye is good your whole body be, will be filled with light when your eye is good you'll see these abundances and there is no need so we have to change our vernacular with our, our mental conditioning. I mean, Romans says, Romans chapter 12 says that we should not be conformed any longer to the pattern in this world, but to be, to, to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And so right, right down to, you know, aspects of basic provision where we're making our list and we're checking it off and going to the market and making sure our shelves are stocked and our refrigerator is full. It's like, well, I need this. I got to pick up that. It's, you got to got it. You got it. Every, every, everything. You see, the system is all based in strife and, and haste and determining it if we have enough. And what is, you know, my bank statement saying? And, and am I able to pull this off? And I want, I need, but... You know, and then there's this, this whole linear scale of conditioning about, you know, equating what we have with what we want, with what's out there. And then we're discouraged to go and, and actually, um, you know, pick up things beyond what's on our shopping list. What, what, what's not just a necessity, but needs and wants and desires and yearnings in our heart is like there's so many calculations that come in because we're entangled to the patterns of this world and our thinking that we, we count ourselves out of receiving and so instead of I need I got to put this on my list uh, I've got to pick this up I receive what, what do you see
Can you see beyond the corporate structure? Can you see beyond the false matrix? Let us see. Let us believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because it's manifesting. And it's not associated with any of these contrivances, any of these corporations. And even in as much as there are corporations, even in as much as there is this huge banking system, even as much as they, you know, they, they throttle our supply lines uh, for control or for you know, for whatever economic reasons, whatever, however there's evil, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil and, um, and there's greed. And as much as they do that, I mean, the children of Israel were, were oppressed and laid siege to by their enemies multiple times in the history of the Old Testament. And God's provision for them um, exacted um, that this, these sieges and this oppression end and then they were sustained and we are sustained today regardless of the wars and the rumors of the wars and the pestilence and the, and the, and the fears that are gripping people's hearts these corporations that we're facing today were typified from the Old Testament as giants and the giants oppressed and they plundered the children and this mindset that we have is a contrivance of these giants. These patterns of this world from Romans chapter 12. This is a contrivance of a giant, of, of the giants. And what, what is it said from uh, the conquest of Canaan when, when, when they were going in to, to actually take the land that was promised to them? Um, Joshua and Caleb had faith. They had tasted to see that the Lord is good. They went and spied out the land and they saw that it was good and they brought provision back. And um, when it came time that the rubber should meet the road and they were gonna actually receive what they saw, the tasting and seeing that the, that the land was good, Caleb said, we shouldn't be daunted. And, and they, you know, their compatriots were, were all like cowering. We, we can't stand it. I mean, it's good and there's wonderful things there, but the, you know, there's corporations. And there's a banking system and there's giants and, and, and they have the control of all the resources and we, we, we can't withstand them. Caleb said, these giants will become for us as bread. So, I mean, there are provision, there's channels of provision that we're used to, that we condition our minds. We, we're playing, you know, with giants, basically. We're playing with corporations. We're in cahoots. We're making an agreements and having transactions with giants, with corporations. But our, our means of supply are outside the false matrix. And if God chooses that through corporations that we should be sustained, these giants are for us as bread. But if they don't, if they throttle the resources and supply lines, I mean, Elijah was uh, kept during a time of famine and, and he... he, he he was fed by ravens. Raven, ravens brought him sustenance. So th there is provision. There is thriving. Regardless if we're abased or abounding. Where is your eye? Is your eye good? Are you seeing to believe the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Regardless if you're abased or abounding. Are you, what, what, what are you perceiving? What, what, what faith, what seed is inside of you that is chafing at the bit to manifest? Is it an abundance? Is your eye good? Is your body filled with light? Or are you calculating according to the patterns of this world that we are subject to, to giants that throttle our supply lines? We're provided for, babies. Corporations are no corporations. False matrix or no false matrix. I'm talking kingdom reality. It's just time to enjoy. Enjoy the bounty of the land. Enjoy life. And believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living.